What is going on everybody? This is Keebs and um, I'm going to be doing something. I'm going to be going back on my word. Uh, a while back I did a video talking about my thoughts, you know, my first impressions of the items in the Bracer Force equipment banner. And one of the ones that I didn't talk too positively about was the clothesline pole. And I mean, I still kind of hold the same opinion that I, I had about it with regards to all of the other heroes who could make use of this thing. But when it comes to Luna, I have completely changed my mind and I am I am 100% sold on this weapon for Luna. So uh, I mentioned in that video that I didn't, you know, there were three heroes I could think of that would possibly make proper use out of this weapon. And one of those was uh, Landius, the other was Gerald, and then the third was Luna. I still hold the same opinion uh, for both Gerald and Landius, um, I've actually changed my opinion for Gerald, and I've made I've I'm actually less sold on it for him, and I think it's actually a, a pretty bad weapon for him. Um, but first, let me start with Landius. Um, basically, I said everything about him that I could have said for why I'm not why I, I'm not a fan of this weapon. The the situations where you would want him to counterattack from three range are just too niche. He you lose too much of your attack stat using this on him because I mean if you use seal guardian and you're if you're using pretty much any attack weapon on him and you're trying to maximize his attack stat you're gonna lose so much power from using the the clothesline pole instead of a seal guardian or um, a dragon slayer gram because you're not gonna get any extra attack out of it if you look at it on on Luna here you don't get any percentage attack here and on top of that uh, you know, it actually reduces your damage output and on top of that only your hero gets to counterattack. So I still hold the same opinion. It's not good for him. You want him to be able to his main value as a tank is to be able to hit hard when people hit him from single target. And when you when you switch him over to uh, the clothesline pull, you you're ruining your chances of being able to do any kind of respectable damage. And then you're doing that only to be able to counterattack from from two range. Uh, I mean, there maybe there are situations where you would want him to attack from two range and actually be the one initiating with an attack from two range, but because most of the time he spends most of his turns having to buff himself with uh, Re Resplendent Legend, his faction buff, as well as Tranquility, uh, because of that, you know, he spends most of his time buffing. There's not going to be too many opportunities for your Landius to actually go out and hit someone, and when you do... Most of the time, it's going to be someone who's guarded by a tank. And, I mean, most tanks aren't going to be able to counterattack you, but you really don't want to be, you know, hitting anyone with your Landius because if you take any damage back, there's a pretty high chance you're going to lose your 80%, above 80% HP damage reduction from your Royal Cavalry on him. So, uh, I still think it's pretty terrible for him. And then Gerald, I mentioned in that video that I was... You know, I was kind of brainstorming ideas for how Gerald can make use of this. And I was th thinking that if you throw on a clothesline pole on him as a cavalry, then he has the option of running uh, a skill set sort of like this, where you use augment to switch your damage over to magic damage. And then you have the clothesline pole so that you can attack from one or two range. However, the main issue with this is that I was thinking if you switch your damage over to magic damage, then you would be able to hypothetically, since you're doing magic damage now, and it's all all your physical damage is counted as magic, you would hypothetically be able to ignore the guards of physical only guards. However, I did actual testing with this, and I threw one on my clothesline pole. I attacked a tank who only had a physical guard. It was just a basic phalanx type uh, lancer general soldier in a in the time rifts and they still were able to guard me even though I had actually I had the augment buff to convert all of my damage to magic so you can't even ignore physical guards with him uh, using the sorceresses and um, and clothesline pull so I really just uh, it it kind of just lost that one piece of value yeah you're still gonna be able to attack from one or two range but at at what cost? You've lost so much power because you're using a clothesline pole instead of uh, either a lance or a seal guardian or something else that you would rather be using on your Gerald. So, um, Gerald, I've 
I think less of him now for using this weapon. Um, and then the, finally, I had Luna. And Luna is the one who I am 100% sold on this weapon. Uh, you'll see that my clothesline pull doesn't have really amazing enchants here. It only gives me 2% magic defense. And when I was doing all my testing, I had no magic defense boosted from here. And on top of that, my Twilight Armor, my King's Crown, and my Veil of Light they all have pretty mediocre enchants. We only have a 6% here, so I'm missing an extra 4% that I could have. I only have 11% here, so this could have an extra 4% as well. And this could have had an extra 5%. So I'm missing about 20% extra magic defense from my enchants here. And I'm also running full magic defense, you know, the 2 plus 2 blue enchants to get the extra 10% magic defense. And, you know, I'm, I don't have ideal enchants. But even without the ideal enchants and only having my Luna at four at uh, five stars, I'm still able to hit over 1400 attack with a clothesline pull. And that's saying something. She's still able to hit really high levels of attack even if you don't use a curse lance. Yeah, if you use a curse lance, you're going to be able to hit a lot harder, meaning you have a higher chance to one shot. But I mean, it's, it's really hard to find yourself in a situation where the opponent is going to leave you an opening for your Luna to be able to run in there and hit them, you know, from one range and one shot. Most of the time your your opponent's probably going to be guarding whoever it is with a tank. And in those situations, sometimes you're going to want to attack from two range so that you can go ahead and do some guerrilla warfare, tap their tank with a, you know, just soften them up to try to uh, encourage your opponent and force their hand to have to heal them and spend their healer's turn if we're talking about PvE or uh, talking about PvP. So clothesline pull, I'm actually really sold on this thing because even with my kind of mediocre enchants on my Luna, I'm still able to hit 1400 plus um, attack when I convert off of Wind Spiral. And you know, you don't have to attack from two range. You can attack from one or two range. However, it also means that if you go in and you have your wind spiral buff up if a mage wants to single target attack you they have to make you know they have to make sure that they have a decent amount of health because they're not going to be able to get off a free attack on you because you have enough a attack to to do some real damage to them and kill off their soldiers or if they they're really low on soldier health maybe kill them off and then you know it, it becomes a situation where they really have to really weigh their options whether they want to attack your luna so I really, I've, I've changed my mind. I've come around, I've completely changed my opinion and I think that this is a great weapon for her. I don't know if I would say that it's, you know, as good as a Cursed Lance, but if you have both of them built, you know, if you kept your clothesline pole and you didn't throw it away, I think that this is probably the up there, up there for use next to Cursed Lance. If you don't have a Cursed Lance, I think this is a really solid alternative. Yeah, you're not going to hit as hard as if you use something like a Barrier Lance or an Emerald Lance instead, but there's there's something to be said about using, you know, not always going for a one-shot, but having the extra versatility. But um, I suppose it, it depends on how you look at the game. Some people want to maximize their attack. Some people uh, want to have the most, the most options. You know, they want to have a lot of versatility and I really think that clothesline pole having one in reserve for your Luna for some weird situations I think that there there's something to be said about using this weapon for her but anyways uh, I think that's gonna be it for this video um, for anyone who didn't throw away your clothesline pole um, if you have a Luna and you know you play her as a Pegasus I think that clothesline pole is a really good weapon I think it, it's something that's worth looking into maybe building for her has a, a secondary weapon option maybe for pve content if you don't have a, a bow built for her or if you don't have demon hunters or whatever um or if you don't have just a second set of gear for her because if you run her with a clothesline pole you can go ahead and throw on demon hunters yeah it's going to be weird because you lose your flying ability but it does save you from having to switch over your gear or switch you know switch your class spend the thirty thousand, switch over to a bow master class and then you can run a full ranged setup if you need it. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've really been enjoying playing around with this weapon. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention in this video is that one 
interesting, unique thing that the clothesline pull does is that it actually changes your... Because it changes you into a two-range attacker, it means that the AI treats you as a two-range attacker. And this is really cool because uh, I've been playing around with her a lot in PvE content lately. And uh, one weird benefit of having her as a two-range attacker means that if you have, you know, a mage and you have... If you have a couple mages in a certain area and you want to take the heat off of them and use your Luna to bait instead, you can actually make it so that the whoever it is, uh, whatever melee attackers that would normally prioritize attacking your mages, you can put her closer to them and they'll attack her instead. And since she's actually a melee attacker normally, uh, and she's fooling them into being a ranged attacker, she's able to possibly tank one or two hits or, you know, you can just tactically use that to your advantage to make her take the hit and maybe bait the the hit away from your whatever your mage or your archer or assassin to stop them from getting hit by whatever it is so um i think that might be it but anyways uh that's just my thoughts i'm for for luna specifically i don't i still think that it's kind of a garbage weapon for pretty much everyone else um even Leon, I still, I mean, he has more, probably more value to use it uh, than most others because he has the guaranteed three mobility retreat, but still, uh, he loses a lot of stats using this thing. So I think that Luna is probably the one who makes the best use out of this item, especially since she's a princess, meaning she can go ahead and use Queen's Ascension to, uh, what's it called, uh, to give her the faction buff to get the double tap out of the fixed damage. Uh, one one other alternative that I've seen from someone else is that I saw them using um, Narm, using Pegasus Narm with Demon Hunters, because she can also do the same thing as Luna. She loses a bit more using the uh, Clothesline Pull as a Pegasus Master than, um, than Luna does, since she doesn't convert attack off of magic defense. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's an extra strategy if you want to go that route with her so uh yeah that's that's my thoughts uh i kind of regret speaking so negatively about this this weapon i hope that nobody threw away their clothesline pull um someone asked in the comments if they think it's worth you know if you they should just throw it away and i i said no don't throw it away because you never know if this thing might be handy and after actually testing it uh, i'm glad that i i didn't tell them to throw it away because i i'm I'm really liking this weapon. I've been using it more often than my Curse Lance, um, and I'm I'm considering maybe using this uh, in Apex Arena, but I'm not sure because the Curse Lance proc, whenever this thing does activate, is just so good. So I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens when when the time comes. But either way, uh, that's gonna be it for now. And I hope this was useful for anyone who is kind of on the fence about this weapon. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.